working with Tanasha at Happy. I met Tanasha. Well, she didn't even have an Instagram page, bro. I met Tanasha while she was just a young lady from straight from Belgium. What's happening, YouTube family? Welcome back to Stuart Time episode 8. And for this episode, we are having one. He's an OG, bro. And when I mean an OG, in, the, in that creative brand sector, I need to our African guest. How are you doing, brother? How's it going? How's everything? Very fine. I'm actually, let me say thank you for yeah. you, like, coming to my segment. I appreciate it. It's well. something new. I know my, my audience will be like, oh. <laughs> African Castro is African Castro is one of the best managers I've seen in the game. For like how many? It's a decade right now. Yeah, we are we're getting to a decade now. You know? Having worked with Sanasha. Man, it's been a journey. I've worked with multiple people. Uh, Do you mind mentioning like Nick Mut? Is it Nick Mutuma? Yeah, yeah, Nick. And actually Nick. Nick is the one who gave you the name Castro. Yeah, Nick is the one who gave me the name Castro. So the real name is David. My name is David Mutuma. Uh, I'm a Kiambu massive guy, you know. Central, yeah, my central brother. Um, grew up in K South, Karibangi South in Iceland. Mm -hmm. That's where I came from. Yeah. Um, I don't just can't get his own way in Kungar. I'm a sufficient kidogo. But um, at the end of the day, I really appreciate being here, bro. Like um, you're doing great things. I'm just happy to be on this platform. You know, I can't wait for you know your growth. Just to see you becoming, you know, the best podcaster in Africa or something, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, you just mentioned about you being, like, coming up, uh, growing. Yeah. In Kiso. Yeah. Like, how is it? Because I know it's a rough, like, whole neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. Kiso, Kiso has it's a rough neighborhood. It's like, um, let me say, it's like, um, it's like a diamond in a rough. Mm -hmm. Um. It has produced one of the best talents in Kenya, you know, Kiss South Flavor. Yeah. We're talking about a bass, talking about bamboo. Yeah. We're talking about this is us. Yeah. You know, one of the best uh, lifestyle bloggers. You know, we're talking about one of the best, uh, you know, just uh, producers, instrumentalists, uh, Olika from South Africa. So we knew each other, all of us, and we know other people that I can't even. You know, remember, but J South has brought a lot of talents. It's always been that neighborhood that um, was community centric, and uh, it has always been harbor. And a lot of shame came from there. So I'm just happy to be from there and represent that place, you know. Yeah. But it's a rough neighborhood, like you say. You know, um, it's still the same place I lost my grandfather from, you know. Um, he got killed by thugs. Now, I've just been a victim of police brutality as well. So, um, and it's real when you're in case out, it's real. You gotta look at over your shoulder, you can't just be comfortable, yeah. you know, because you could be laughing with the guy who's gonna like take your life next, you know. But it's, I don't know, like now it's, it's, it's relaxed, but it's still, you know, people are still grinding, you know, on the low, though, you know. Yeah, because I also had um, for me and the court, at least in my East experience of food, it just it comes with it. It comes, with it comes you know, you, 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 you never know when it's coming. Even when I'm there, I'm just cautious, you know, because I still have to go back there, say what's up to my childhood friends we, you know, we grew up with um, before we moved out. Yeah. And, um, you know, they, they, they have some really, you know, serious stories, you know, and you get to hear a lot of stories and it never stops until today. And the thing with uh, Islam is like we have like a lot of talent because right now we have like Kenyan drillers. Yeah. When we're talking about Kenyan drill music, yeah. Like the massive and the best talent comes from Islam. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about uh, Buru, Abu Kaysa, yeah. so like it's just there. Yeah. And now the question is like like you guys, Nini, Williams, Abu Branch, the the corporate creative mm -hmm. space. And yeah, it's something that's so difficult <laughs> for people to like. I mean, like how, yeah. uh, like, what can you tell that artist in terms of branding? Branding, yeah. yeah. I mean, um, for me, you know, uh, let me just say, I took a passion once. I got involved in it. I wasn't even supposed to be in the entertainment industry, for sure. Um, uh, I'm one of the victims of the eight for four system. Let me just or casualties of the eight for four system, whereby. You know, we're just told if you go to school, um, you know, you 
graduate, everything will be like let's come around. Actually, you get a job, but me, Nilienda mbaka shule, my dad took a loan um, to take me to school, to college. I was in Kenya Methodist University, and uh, it's not a cheap university. And when I went there and I studied and I came out, man, there was nothing. There was nothing. I, I remember I graduated. It was really frustrating. You know, I really understand when people talk about mental health with graduates, like this thing is real. Like personally, a person like me who took a course of entrepreneurship, even internship in itself, I had to do it at my dad's office. There was nobody who's willing to hire an entrepreneur to do for them nothing. What are you doing? You know, probably they're thinking you're coming here to study their business and go, you to become a competitor. Yeah. So they don't wanna, you know, because I didn't specialize in anything other than entrepreneurship. So it was really difficult for me, even getting a job, it was really hard. So, what did I do? I, you know, I resorted to the streets, man. You know, I had to go back to the streets. And this is something that I had you say before, or uh, an interview, you said you had to be street smart. I had to be street smart, man. You know, I, I had to go back. I was just tired of, you know, my mother cussing me out, telling me like, you know, you're a grown-ass man, we took loans for you, and you're here sitting in the house, you know, all you do is just call your, you know, your friends, and you guys just hang around and chill. You know, yeah, just yeah. chill and she probably not realizing that I've sent like probably in that day almost close to 50 or 100 or CVs to different people then. I remember when I was graduating it's when Kibaki took over the, the whole structure. And um, when Kibaki was taking this structure from the Moi era, man, it was really messy. Businesses were not performing, there was no money circulation, it was just a really bad economy, truth be told. And nobody was willing to hire a graduate. Especially if you had a degree, they were looking at you like a big expense. Even Safaricom was hiring guys with diploma certificates. If you have a degree, you're overqualified. You can imagine. So I really went through a lot of trauma trying to figure out how will I bounce back from, you know, the fact that, you know, uh, my dad is out here, you know, telling my mom, you have to tell this guy this loan has to be paid, and I'm not paying it back. You know, I educated him. Me, I made a super new graduation part. You might have to cut him and go hit the streets, bro. Like, <laughs> like, like, you know, because my dad is a, is an ex, my dad is an ex matatu driver. So, uh, you know, me to matatu driver, I grew up in matatu industry. Man. Like the culture fed literally. Yeah. My dad is the pioneer of matatu. In they started the route twenty three, literally. You know, and um, I used to watch him wake up every day at four, come back home at ten at night and all this stuff for 11 at night sometimes he'd even sleep in the car mm -hmm. it was a rough patch growing i didn't grow up you know the silver you know plate yeah. and it wasn't easy you know my mom being a household uh, wife but you know she wasn't like you know working yeah. so it's dependent on one person yeah. you know man shout out to my dad he worked his ass off until he became diabetic so and you know he lost his father just from the same environment you know from bullets so we we grew up rough man we, we didn't grow up soft and um you know it wasn't easy so i resorted to the streets man you know i had to call my old homeboys you know yo you gotta hook me up with the club man i, I gotta do what i gotta do to to know to come to nairobi and uh you know just be able to maneuver and um luckily i, I had friends from college um I met a friend who introduced me to Nick Mutuma and um, eventually uh, Nick embraced me from day one. He was just like, yo, bro, I like how you dress, but he didn't connect. <laughs> because I think you have like just that look. Like, yeah. Like, like, yeah. Exactly. You know, you know, you just seen him with a briefcase. Yeah. He didn't know what the briefcase was full of. You know what I mean? And I, you know, until today, you know, he does, he didn't know what I was doing, you know, I just met the dude and I was like, yo, bro, you know, I'm just trying to save my ass as well, could you, you know, like, could we work something out? And he was like, yo, bro, we gotta work things out, I need a manager, man. And um, I told him the good thing I went to college, so I got, I got that knowledge of paperwork, because this, it's, it, everything is always on the paperwork. Yeah. A lot of people get robbed um, off the paperwork. They don't know how to read contracts, interpret them and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I've always been good with paperwork, you know, so I made sure that, you know, just as soon as, uh, you know, we started working with him, you know, all these businesses are like, and as well, I was trying to get away from the streets. I was tired, you know, I was just tired of all the, you know, street, you know, just living with paranoia 24 seven, 
you know you don't know somebody might rock up in somebody's back borders or boundary you know i lost uh, two friends from that literally they just you know and um i didn't want to be a part of that and uh, i can honestly say that the, the culture again saved my life i was so i'm a culture baby yeah. like i'm totally 100 percent culture baby like i'm culture raised by the matatu industry fed now by the but the entertainment, entertainment. entertainment. I've been born for this culture from day one, so this is not something that I forced on myself. I do believe that God put me in this position so that I can be able to help people get straight as I get myself straight. Yeah, yeah. And then after that, you just had the opportunity to work with Tanasha. And yeah. this was at the time when she was, let me say, at, at her peak. Because this was when she was... No, nah, let me tell you, we didn't, we didn't get to start working with Tanasha at her peak. I met Tanasha, well, she didn't even have an Instagram page, bro. I met Tanasha while she was just a young lady straight from Belgium. And uh, she was trying to find her way into the industry. And I was introduced by the same guy who introduced me to Nico Thomas. Same guy who introduced me to Tanasha. And that's how I get to meet Tanasha in a studio here. Yeah. And she was trying to apply for um, a, a modeling role because they were, you know, they were doing photography and stuff like that. That time, photography was kicking in the culture heavy. And um, I was that time I was managing Martin Kimaki and Tracy Wanjiru yeah. from the Republic. I just started working with them because I got them the job at MTV. So um, when I met Tanasha, she just, just told me, "Yo, I'm trying to make it out." by any means necessary. Yo, tell me how we can do this. I'll give you your percentage. I want to work with you. I hear you're the best managers to, to, to work with. And that time I'm managing three brands. Nikuntuma, um, Tracy, and Tomato. Yeah. And it's not easy. Oh, and Sharp, they are men as well. So I have like four people that I got to make sure they're straight. And now here's Tanasha saying she wants to be part of the, of the team. And uh, I literally welcomed her. She was my baby sister. And I said, yo, we're gonna get into it. Did work. you take it like as a risk because you had like a couple of other people you're working of with? Course. And of course, it's a high risk business because it's it's this you're dealing with um emotional creative people. Yeah. They're creatives. Yeah. So all creatives normally have you know the creative yeah. elements that come to that creative personality. So they are all emotional, you know, they they they're trying to make sure that they are way is wavy, you know, nobody's trying to distort that, yeah. and nobody's coming in between that. And it was a juggle for a minute, it wasn't easy to handle all these personalities and put them, but I did it. Did it. I did it one man army, man. I did it, and I can honestly say I'm proud of myself, even to see where they have got it right now, you know, after all the you know, the dust has settled and I'm done with the management yeah. industry, yeah. I'm just happy to see where they are. But literally, I met Tanasha there. Yeah, that's what I met, and uh, you know, I, I got her first Safaricom ad. After that ad, we part ways for some, you know, reasons that I don't want to talk about, you know. And then also, um, we we ended up regrouping again together when she said she wants to take her music serious and she wants to be in the music industry for real. That's when now uh, I got that opportunity as well to work with her again. And um, I never looked for her. She looked for me. She called me back again. And she said, Yo, Castro, you know, I've been looking the whole industry. There's nobody who can do the things that you used to do. So this is on record. And uh, she said that. And I was like, Yo, um, you know, it's been a long time. I don't have any grudges towards you and whatever. Whatever happened in the past happened in the past. So we cleared it out. And uh, I told her, welcome back to your family. Let's put it on. Let's start working. Now, was this the period, like, can you call it the, the big period? This was the moment where we were preparing for the peak. Because okay. the peak wasn't there. Yeah. The peak was there because of hard day to them. Yeah. That's where the peak came from. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And um, I do believe Tanasha's a star yeah. from the jump. She's been always a star and she's a star. But um like i said creative people with emotions and all man they have a character that's really wanting all of them you know what i mean yeah. and you have to find a balance to to, to manage your, your your own character and the people that you're dealing with as well yeah. you know yeah. 
So I'm I met her while she was with Diamond and um, she already had an affinity. She had a broad affinity, yeah. but she didn't have the right music to to put, you know, just to uh, to prove that she's the right she's the right musician that you know the public should be looking forward to. But we worked towards that, and um, that's where now the peak came. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what's What's the biggest challenge you've come across, like while working with? Let me ask precisely international. Like, what's the challenge? How was the setback? The setback. Yeah. I think um, I can only say because there's a lot of things I can't speak about. Because of course, uh, ever since we fell off, you know, there's been lawyers yeah. involved in the whole situation. But I can honestly say that um, I'm trying to look for the right words so that I don't look like I'm shamming or yeah. whatever. But I can I can honestly say it's it's it's, it's still um, you know character de- development. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me just say character development yeah. is is what can determine how far you can go. Yeah. But also mental health is key. Let me just say that like she's been through traumas. Yeah. If Tanasha breaks down her story from childhood till now, and I don't think she's ever told anyone her stories, but I know because she, she's my sister. Yeah. And everybody I work with, I know them from in depth. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know their background stories. I still don't even like have a problem with her like that. You know, I already forgave her and I'm done with that, apart from the lawyers who took her on it because she was already going much on me on her platform, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I, I mean, those are. It's business, it yeah. has to come like that. Yeah. But for me, mo- mostly, I still feel like she needs to heal from those childhood traumas and the things she's been through. That lady has been through a lot, man. She's a mother right now. She has this public expectation. She pressure, pressure. Yeah. you know, this dude out here, you know, is, is, is you know, the, the person they, they got the baby with is a celebrity as well. They broke up in public. That, that's something not a lot of women can handle correct. So it's something, you know, she just has to, you know, like, let me just say, uh, seeking mental health is a good thing. Because it will help you. Yeah. It will help you be able to even make proper decisions that will take you to the next level. Take your life. brand higher. Take your brand higher, you know what I mean? There's nothing like I'll get over something and you haven't spoken to a professional. You think you know better, you don't know nothing, man. People are crushing. This industry is big, man. People go crazy about this industry. You know, you can just look at the story of Britney Spears, man. Yeah. You know, it's sad. Yeah. You know, Britney Spears is a superstar. This world class superstar. Mm-hmm. But she got where she got because she didn't deal with her, mental. you know, mental health, right? So I normally tell people, like, you gotta deal with your mental health, right? You know, and that's why, like, we started Established Africa. Yeah. Based off that experience that I had with her and other individuals as well. You know, I just wanted everybody to, and I do it myself. I seek therapy, bro. Like, I'm on therapy at least once a month or twice in a month. Because you, you have to talk, like, you know, our industry, it, it really, it mentally drains you. Mm-hmm. It mentally drains you. Because it's people who have expectations towards you, and you have expectations towards yourself. people around you, yeah. and yourself. Yeah. So if you fail, everything is on you. you like, crush it. And it's public. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, it's not easy. But at the end of the day, you're human. You just gotta accept the fact that you're a human, mm-hmm. and you're not God. You know, you can't just fix each and every problem for yeah. yourself. You know, you gotta talk to a professional. You gotta see someone, cause you have to know where you're coming from to know where you're going. Sure. That's the most important thing. Yeah. And a lot of young people don't even know where they're going, cause they don't even understand where they come from. They don't understand that. They don't have a, a very good fin- uh, foundation, cause even you got a building like this that we are in. A foundation had to be laid for us to be able to, to sit here yeah. and have this conversation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So a lot of people don't understand that foundation is what determines whether you have a building up. And without a proper foundation, it may take you years to get that building up. So if you just work on getting a foundation from day one straight, you know, yeah. everything can be built from there real quick without even taking shortcuts in life. Because a lot of creatives apparently in this industry just like shortcuts, man. And it's unfortunate, bro. It's really unfortunate. People just love shortcuts. Nobody wants to embrace the process. You know, everybody's looking for a godmother, a godfather. You know what I'm saying? Whoever will come and bail me out from this situation. Nobody wants to take that right as it comes. Because you're getting pressure. You're seeing your peers are doing better than you. 
Man, me, one thing that has saved me, man, it's I've always been the guy to, I'm in competition with myself, first and foremost. Yeah. I don't care about anybody. It's you and your friends with you. It's, it's me and myself. Yeah. There's no like being in competition with what I see other podcasters do or what you do. Or, I'm in my own lane, bro. I don't even put my my content on 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 on, 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 on you know streaming sites that people expect to find my content. I'm only on YouTube. And that's because, you know, I just, I was starting out. I just think, but eventually I'll be, you know, if you go to establishafrican.com, that's where you can get my audio for the podcast if you want to listen. That's where you can get all my videos. I put everything on my platform, on my website. I'm independent. So I never expect myself to be on the, on the roster of, you know, awards, being awarded. Because I'm not on Spotify, I'm not on Apple. I don't want to do it. I can do it for myself. I know one thing that, you know, we're losing a lot of money just being on these parties. So I understand the business element of it. I know the value that comes with content. We're in the content era right now. Somebody somewhere will watch this content a hundred years from today. And somebody will earn from it. Yeah. And it may not be you. True. So you gotta be careful where you place your content, man. You gotta know how you can control your your own artwork. Mm-hmm. And you and, and, and you gotta know how is it are you can I maximize on it for you to make you know, for, for you to leave money for my generation to come next. Because we are all trying to fight that generational caste that, you know, just comes with our families, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And um, having worked with Tanasha and being close to Asafi, mm. is what, what's the difference between how Asafi does their stuff with, like, us Kenyan artists? Like, let me talk about the top notch. Like, let me talk about Kali, mm. who's your friend. Like, yeah, Kali's